I got a notification from uh, Uber that says, Jesus is on his way. And I got these chills like, wow, today's gonna be a great day. I screenshotted it and I put it on Facebook. And I said, coincidence? I don't think so. It's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. That's his, that's this, he had an Uber driver called Jesus or Jesus. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that's cheered me right up. After all the exploitation, all of the fake crying, the exaggeration, that's cheered me right up. This fucking Uber driver was called Jesus. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new, my name is Emma. Today we're going to be looking at an interesting story. This video is about eight months old. Basically on my recent internet trawling, I came across a video called I met Jesus and Satan and filmed it. You know I gotta see that. This is a channel called Logan Mabry. I assume Logan Mabry is the chap's name, young guy. I don't know exactly how to describe him, there's an air of like Mr. Beast mixed with like a Logan Paul kind of. His catchphrase is be more, do more. He's got a lot of videos trying to break Guinness World Records. A lot of his popular ones are things like taking a homeless man to Disneyland, giving somebody a thousand dollars. It's that sort of thing. In my opinion, this sort of content kind of walks the border between charitable and exploitative. Interestingly, he is not openly evangelical on his channel. Typically the big kind of Christian YouTubers, this is quite a big YouTuber who's got some of his more popular videos have like over 5 million views. It tends to be with the Christian specific channels that that's very much part of the brand identity. It's nowhere about on his channel. Three of his four most recent videos, all from this year, are called things like Homeless Addict Dies and Meets Jesus, brackets Amazing Testimony. Died and then met Jesus, amazing story. And obviously the video we're going to look at today, I met Jesus and Satan and filmed it. Everything before that is like counting $500,000 in public, sneaking $100 on strangers' heads, 10,000 water bottle flips, brackets, world record. I don't know, it's very peculiar. It's not my kind of, it's not my kind of content. This kind of content tends to attract a younger audience. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. That tends to be what I find. Anyway, he was supposedly out doing his good work, looking for people to help, is what he says. And then while, while he was out trying to help people, he met Jesus and Satan. And he apparently has proof of it on camera, so I have to see this. This could be what changes me from an atheist to a Christian. It's not super likely, but you never know. Obviously, we're going to watch this and see what he says, see how he talks about it. I'm not in a position to tell anybody what they experienced. I can certainly speculate, but I do think it's a little bit of a coincidence that of all the millions of people that don't see Jesus and Satan, this young chap who does see Jesus and Satan happens to be a pretty successful YouTuber with similarly titled clickbaity content. I just think it's a bit of a coincidence. It's the kind of channel where every other video has like super emotional in brackets or very inspiring, you know, the, and it's very strange. I think that's more of an algorithm thing than anything. I, I feel like that's a business decision for a lot of people. So I don't, I'm not holding it against this guy. I just think it's, it's funny that it's that sort of content, but also he happens to have met Jesus and Satan. I don't know, let's see. This was in November, so Christmas tree's up. I'm not seeing any particularly Christian decorations. Do you know what I mean? It's not overt, like most Christian channels are. So a few weeks ago, my buddy Adam Vibe Gutton messaged me and he was like, hey, you should come with us out to Fort Lauderdale to- Oh, uh, piano music. You know how I feel about emotional piano music in the background of videos. It's fine. Film some YouTube content. I was like, I mean, that's what I do. So we went out to- <laughs> That's Fort what I do. Lauderdale and we're filming some videos and um, all of the content is supposed to be wholesome. Adam, he specializes in drug addiction uh, recovery, so he helps people that are um, having active drug addiction issues um, find Jesus and get over that addiction. So we're- I, I mean, this could be a whole separate video on its own, my thoughts on Christian or religious versus secular charities. I'm happy that he works with specialists to help people overcome their addiction. I think it's a shame, and this is part of the reason I think secular charities are just better and more inclusive, 
I think it's a shame that it's never just charity for the sake of charity. They would probably think of it that way because they believe in Jesus and God and they think that's just doing more good. But the reality is it's support in exchange for evangelizing. It's, I'll help you if you listen to me talk about Jesus. And if you don't believe in Jesus, if you if you believe in a different faith, then would they reach out and support you if their charity revolves around getting better through finding Jesus? Would they still support you? And even if they would, would you feel comfortable as an outsider seeing a Christian charity? Because when I see a religious charity, I'm like, that's not for me. A Christian probably wouldn't think to donate to, say, a Muslim charity and vice versa. You just wouldn't because you see the religious title and you're like, oh, that's not for me. And you move past it. That's all I'm going to say on that. I, I feel like charity is better when it's secular. There's lots of religious charities that do really good work. I don't think good should be done in exchange for evangelizing. Anyway, back to the story. It's very emotional. Piano music. Let him carry on. We're out filming a video and the idea is we're holding a sign that says, I lost everything to drug addiction. I just need someone to talk to. And we're filming, filming, filming. And finally, we start getting some re good reactions. And then we're like, OK, we need to go relocate and start on a new idea. And so we're driving. It's funny how, the t how open he's being about what he does. We basically just had to wait until we got good reactions. I'm sure he feels like he is helping people genuinely, and I'm sure he is, but it's very clear that it's like, this is work, this is for a video. We need good reactions to put in a video. I, I think that's actually a good thing that this is coming across kind of honest about that. I'm sure I'll disagree when we get to the part about Jesus and Satan, but for the moment, I'm kind of feeling it. Driving to this part of town that was like really rough. Um, we're driving and we see this lady. She appears to be praying for this these two people at this bus stop. So we're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So Adam and I whip the car around. It's and crazy. Do you, I get I get given leaflets on the street and God bless you all the time. It's not that crazy when I'm praying for some people at a bus stop. It's fine. We're gonna give them a couple Bibles and pray for. Yes, you've noticed, haven't you? The price of everything seems to be going oh, up. Oh, fucking going Nigel up Farage. Very, very I'm so upset and distracted. I just got a fucking scam advert featuring Nigel Farage. Fucking Neagle Feagle, get out of my YouTube. This is supposed to be my safe place. Give them a couple Bibles and pray for them. <laughs> See, this is my problem. It's not like we're specifically looking for addicts. We're specifically looking for homeless people to support in some way. It's, oh, there's somebody we could give a Bible to. A couple Bibles and pray for them. And just thank them for you know praying for some random strangers on the at the bus stop pull up right in front of them or right in front of this little little bus stop and we realized very quickly that the lady actually wasn't praying for them what was happening is she was super she was just gone she was so high on drugs and alcohol that she was just it was so sad that is sad and awful. I'm so sorry for smiling. It's just in my head. It's this guy and his friend being like, yes, somebody's praying. Oh no, they're just super high. If this woman, exi I, I don't know yet. We haven't seen any video footage. I don't know that this woman is real yet. I can't verify that. If she is, very sorry for her. A lot of people go through that. It's terrible. But I kind of love the idea of Logan being like, yeah, somebody praying on the street, this will make amazing content. Nope. Drugs. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain how sad I was. And so... You don't have to explain, Logan. The piano music does it for you. Adam was like, well, maybe we should, like, get out and pray for her. And so, it, basically... Oh, number one, she was super high on drugs. Number two, we think she may have been prostituting. Well, we basically knew she was prostituting. And the guy that she was all over was like, it was just bad. It was so bad. The thing is, she was a pretty girl. Like, she had potential. <laughs> Religion. The thing is, the worst thing, the thing that made it so sad, she was pretty. So, Ab and I just sat in the car and we were just like pondering on like what we should do. 
and we're both basically in tears because this is like the saddest thing I've ever witnessed in my entire life. We're sitting in the car and she starts to look at us. This is like an apology. This is like a YouTube apology video. Like shut your eyes for long enough for the water to well up. And this is really hard for me and it's so sad and the piano music and... And she's, I mean, the look that she gave us when she looked at us, she just looks like like just so out of it. She comes to the window and she asks us for money. And it was just so sad, man. Like, I- There was nobody there. That wasn't like a shot of the, win the, the woman coming up to the window. That was his friend looking sad in the car. And like, that's very weird. Carry on. I've never wanted to like just bust up tears ever that bad. And so we're talking to her and we're asking her if she needs anything. And, and so he asked her, he's like, hey, do you want to go get some food with us? And she's like, no, I, no, you got a dollar. All I want to do is make a dollar, one dollar. I need some dope, I need a roll up. And we asked her. Like, That's, she's like, I can't say anything for sure. I wasn't there. All I have is the video we're looking at. I understood everything she said. She was asking for a dollar, she wanted to get some roll-ups. She didn't sound or look crazy out of her head like she could barely stand up. I know what he's describing is really sad to see a homeless person really struggling. That's devastating, especially if it's a young person. He claims to do this stuff all the time, and he does, we know he does because it's all over his channel. He meets with homeless people and addicts all the time. There's no reason, there's nothing I can find that makes this more emotionally devastating than every other time he meets a homeless person and or an addict that is causing this kind of reaction. And then based on the video footage where, again, it doesn't look particularly outlandish, it's a woman asking for a dollar so she can buy roll-ups, it's, there's nothing crazy going on that would inspire this tear-jerking reaction. If I'm being brutally honest, I'm not buying it. I mean, we knew I wasn't going to buy it eventually because at some point he's going to meet Jesus, but... Do you need anything? Can we help you? Can we take you somewhere? And she wasn't really saying anything. Have you ever thought about treatment? Oh no. And um, I thought that was kind of bizarre. And after talking to her for a little bit longer, I, we realized she kept messing around with her leg and we looked down and lo and behold, she has an ankle bracelet on. I got a bracelet. You do? I just got them less than a day ago. And they told her she kept- She doesn't sound, do you know what I mean? Of course you can be, you can be off your face and not sound it, but she seems very lucid. I can understand everything she's saying telling us that she needed to stay between Broward County and another county. <clears throat> we're talking to her and we're not getting anywhere. And then all these guys keep coming up to her and talking to her in the process. And I'm gonna eat three, I'm gonna eat three Spanish chips. And then I'm gonna get you another white girl. You won't give me like, like $200 some. I think God has a bigger plan for you. Why has he not done anything yet then? People live and die on the street. Is that God's amazing plan for them? I just find that such a condescending, shitty thing to say. She's like, trying to pimp out other girls at this moment. He's like, God has a plan for you. She decided to walk back across the five lane hi uh, little highway and there was another bus stop over there with like 15 guys and they were all over her. and. You could tell each and every one of them were super high on drugs. They were all drinking alcohol. And the crazy thing is, we're right beside a liquor, liquor store, which was right beside a Salvation Army. How bizarre, right? It's like the Simpsons movie, when everyone from the church runs to the pub next door and everyone from the pub runs to the church. That's, that's the liquor store in the Salvation Army. The part that really bothered me the most and that stuck out to me the most was when we pulled up, she was making out with this like really old guy, like hardcore, like 
oh, it was so disgusting. And he was like all over her and he kept pulling her back and forth. And like I said, after about 20 minutes of it, we realized that there was nothing we could really do for her other than pray for her and, and tell her that Jesus loves her. We collectively decided to, you know, pack up and, you know, head on down the road. So our friends Richie and Chandra were in another car right beside us. So they took off first and uh, Adam and I kind of made one more loop around. And as we're driving down the road, they're probably maybe two or 300 feet down from the bus stop. And this girl, it was so sad. It was so sad. I just got to remind you another two or three times that it was really sad. I've never seen anything so sad. It was so sad. What's a step below emotional manipulation? Where like, you're not good enough at manipulation. Just trying to say, trying to reassure you, it was sad. Listen to the piano music and listen to me telling you it was sad. And then feel emotion. And then subscribe and, I don't know, buy merch. Whatever. I'll be honest, I'm hating this more than I thought I would. I just feel so badly right now. People who are genuinely struggling are being A, judged really hard, he's being super judgmental and just like so exploitative like i feel like people who are struggling are really being exploited which like i said is the kind of what these sort of channels thrive on and it's it walks a fine line some people say it's if people are still benefiting then it's isn't it worth it and i i don't know where i stand on it but i find it hard to watch i just we're very clearly being constantly reassured how sad this is, and how crazy it was, and how so out of it this woman was, so that we'll feel emotional and keep watching. And it's just, I don't want to be here doing that for those people. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like by watching this now, I feel like I'm taking part in the exploitation. I don't know, it makes me feel really bad. Maybe I'm overreacting. So there was like a metal fence, a metal barred fence, and she was hanging on to it while he was trying to pull her toward him. And this was in the middle of town, middle of a busy intersection, but it's in an area where nobody's ever going to do anything. And I remember seeing that and I was like... The piano music also really annoys me. These kind of things are so cheap. It's such a cheap overt tactic that like the, the longer I have to listen to it, the more angry I feel. I want, I met Jesus and Satan. I don't want, let's discuss the exploitation of homeless people for videos. That's what, that's what this has become. Ah, oh. Logan, we're almost halfway through now and the title, not heard a thing. I don't know, man, it was just like, just so sad. And it was really sad. For the next like 15 miles, we're just sitting in the car and I'm like, man, like I've never witnessed anything like that. It's just like one of those things where like, I don't know, it, it affected me so much. I don't know how Adam was really feeling, but you could I, tell I he was sad. don't Because he's been you. in a similar situation like that before. He's been addicted to meth, heroin, all these drugs. He's been homeless before. He knows. Now he's exploiting his friend for shock value. And so we're driving down the road and Richie calls us and he's like, hey, we need to reconnect and, uh, and such. So uh, we got off the phone, we're driving a little bit further and Adam looks down he was like, hey, whoa, whoa, we're out of gas. Like the, the, the um, mileage thing was just blinking, letting us know we're out of gas. And so we pulled into this gas station to get gas and as we're pulling up, I see this, uh, kid run over to Richie and he's got this box of candies and I had no this is a really long-winded way of telling this story did we need all that about oh look at the gas meter the gas thing was blinking and telling us we're out of gas so we had to go and get gas no idea what they were doing and after the kid walked away Richie ca called us and he was like dude you're never gonna believe this this kid is trying to sell candy bars I just assumed it was for like Boy Scouts or something to raise money but no he was trying to sell candy bars so him and his mom could get a hotel room for the night. Shanda, after we left that situation, she was praying to God and she was asking him to put a woman in our path that day. It's incredible. I'm sorry. It's incredible. This, I always think people who believe that their prayers are genuinely personally answered by God this specifically and i'm sorry if you feel this way I, I i don't want to offend you but this is this is how i feel about it i just think that's the most selfish way of viewing the world to think that 
God was like, oh, you want a person to help to make videos about? You want somebody who's really suffering to make videos about? Sure, I'll plop one in your path. I'll say, oh, walk this way to the gas station today and then you get great content out of it. But God doesn't listen to the woman herself, all of the homeless addicts that are struggling and praying to God for support, that probably were praying to God for help before they ended up homeless. He's blind to all that, but if you need a homeless person to exploit for your YouTube video, God's got your fucking back, dude. Like, what do you... How can you possibly believe that and not feel guilty? I guess, like, after a little bit of the conversation with Richie and the little boy, turns out his name was PJ. And <laughs> so PJ and his mom were living out of a U-Haul. So we just thought this was the craziest story and we ended up, you know, reaching out to... We basically just walked over to the U-Haul and... Uh, this is all on camera. This is a video that's already uh, uploaded. This is one of his recent videos. Homeless living out of a U-Haul. Brackets emotional. It's that sort of thing. You can check it out on Recovered on Purpose, uh, Adam Vibe Gutton's channel. Uh, it's an amazing video. They get to tell their story and such. So the next day, uh, so we ended up taking them to a hotel for like seven days and, and doing all this stuff for them. But the next day we went to pick them up. Uh, PJ and his mom, Armani, and we're planning on taking them grocery shopping. Uh, we bought PJ a bunch of clothes, and then we paid for their U-Haul for seven days. We were doing all this stuff, and I just can't believe that we met these amazing people and that Shanda was praying for that literal situation. So th They literally, this is what he does for a job. They were driving around looking for people to make this kind of content with. In an area, he specifically said this part of town is just full of addicts. Like, he basically said, everyone is high. Like, everyone is on drugs. There's loads of homeless. And then he's like, I can't believe that she was praying and then we actually found a woman who needed help in this part of town that I keep saying is full of people who desperately need help. So the next day we pick them up, we do all this stuff for them, and we're driving them back to this hotel. And like I said, keep in mind, when we left that bus stop yesterday, we're like 15 miles away at a random hotel, okay? Homewood Suites. I'll never forget this day in my life. Never. We're kind of in the back of the hotel, like in the very back end, and we pull up to their room, and lo and behold, that guy that was all over the sweet girl that was on drugs the, the day prior was sitting right there. You just That's can't just make this stuff up. He's like so, Adam is so excited. You can't make this stuff up in his US flag tank top. Tank top? That's not right. What are those called? And I look at Adam and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. This is... This is crazy. The fact that we're 50, at least 15 miles away from that bus stop and how we were so emotional yesterday when we witnessed that. He said his friend wasn't emotional about it. He said he specifically went on to explain why he thought that Adam wasn't emotional about it. But no, now we were so emotional about it. It's crazy. It's the same guy, even though we didn't, you know, get any footage of the guy. It's, it's the same guy. It's amazing. This guy better be fucking Satan. That's all I'm saying. How we met these two awesome people just shortly after. Now, we're sitting at a hotel room that we purchased for these two people. And we get back and that guy's sitting on a crate right there didn't know what to think so I was raised a, a Christian like I was raised in like Pentecostal churches and but yes I, I feel like I just haven't really been living uh, the right life so I myself I don't even know how to pray and when I do I definitely feel like based on this and the sudden change in his very recent content I I, I believe him when he says like he was raised Christian, but he hasn't really been living the life and recently that has sort of changed for him. It tends to be for myself, so praying for others is like just completely a whole nother world for me. I've just, I've never put my hand on someone and prayed for them. But he did say, like yesterday they were driving around looking for people to help and pray for. 
They were like driving around, they drove up to the bus stop and were like, oh, let's give them some Bibles and pray for them. Now he's like, I don't even know how to pray for people. So we go back downstairs, I turn the camera on, I'm like, no one's gonna believe this. No one is ever gonna believe this. And I set my, um, Adam starts introducing himself and he asked if we could pray for him. The thing that blew my mind the most is this guy was a totally different person. He was not the same person at all. And that is what sobriety will do to you. So Adam puts his hand on the guy and um, probably about five or 10 seconds later, I'm like, let's do it. I put my hand on the guy and we're praying for him. I'm praying in my head and Adam's praying out loud, like loud. And Adam is like speaking to this guy like he's speaking to a demon that's inside of him. And we, we must have prayed for the guy for like a minute or two. And I had this rush of like chills fill my body the entire time. Like normally when you get like chills, it lasts for like what, two or three seconds. This was like two minutes. And I could feel like God was there. And God was, God was telling us the day prior when we pulled up, I was so scared to get out of the car and like go pray for this girl and ask her if she needed anything. We waited for her to come to us like, but it was like God was telling us, I know you didn't do what I was asking you to do, but thank you for praying for the girl anyway. Thank you for asking her if she needed anything. And the How does he know that? Was God involved in this conversation? He said he felt like God was there, but was God there like give, giving him notes? It sounds like God's telling him exactly what he wants to hear, which is very convenient. The next day, it, it, it was like God was in this guy now, not the devil anymore. God was in the guy and he was normal. And it was like God, like I said, God was basically trying to show us what we did right and to show that that guy is not actually an evil guy. He was just misled by drugs and alcohol. And I, I don't know. Just... I don't want to be straight up like, this dude is selfish or Christians are selfish or evangelicals who believe this kind of thing is selfish. I don't want to tr like pigeonhole everybody, not the people, but these specific beliefs. I just find to be so selfish. Like the idea that God has, whether directly or indirectly, caused suffering for these people and placed suffering people in the path of this random YouTube guy so that he can learn a lesson? Shouldn't God be more preoccupied with the people who are suffering on the street and not, you know, teaching this well-off, already believer YouTuber character a lesson. Like, how self-involved do you have to be to think that that is the reality? The people around me are just here as lessons taught to me by God. The fact that Adam's message is all about like drug addiction, recovery, and the fact that we had that encounter with all these people, all these good people, it made me realize like how much drugs and alcohol can really affect your life. And it made me realize what the devil can do when you're on stuff like that. That guy was a good guy. He wasn't a bad guy. He was just misled by drugs and alcohol. And I just felt like God was there with us. <laughs> I hope you guys one day have a day like this because it was just like reaffirming that God is so real. I hope you have a day where you meet a really desperately struggling person so you can pray for them and feel all smug about how God is with you too. Like what is this, what are you wishing on people? Well now we know this is not going to be the video that, <laughs> that stops me being an atheist. And that it's not all made up. And that you it's know, not all made up. It's not all made up because this one guy was, again, I, f I filmed it, we've not seen any of it. We've seen like a few seconds of different people. We saw like the edge of the guy he's talking about now, his forehead while Adam was praying for him. That's, that's it. How can you possibly say like, we, we prayed for this dude and because he had sobered up and it turned out he's not all bad. God is really real and he's with us. It's not all made up. Don't make sense, but he's real. I'm telling you, he's so real.
He's so real. <laughs> I went on a an Easter egg hunt, and there was a kid who didn't have many Easter eggs, so I gave him two Easter eggs, and we both cried. And it's so real, guys. The Easter Bunny's so real. I don't get it. <laughs> You're not crying. You're not crying at this this nothing. But the worst thing about it is that they like. He did his clickbaity video. At the very least, he provided accommodation and paid for new clothes and stuff for this mother and child. They did that good thing. They got two videos out of it. And now they're using that day to be like, it was the craziest thing. This other stuff happened. I can't believe it. And I felt like God was there. And this guy wasn't that bad. It was just drugs. And then the craziest clickbait title that is just not at all related to the content. And the sad piano music. It is just not that... It's not real. This is not a real person that we're watching right now. This is somebody who knows how to lie. Because the best way to lie is to start with the sprinkle of truth. They were out looking for people to help, they met these people. It's just a wild exaggeration to make good clickbaity internet content. It's like not just exploiting people to make content to get views, but it's like using God to manipulate people of faith into like being amazed by your story. I just I just feel like that's really fucking wrong. <laughs> so I he's like you. crying and then his hands come away from his face and his face is completely neutral. It's like <laughs> So anyway <laughs> <laughs> so he's not fucking crying. Before we were about to go over there to meet Hermani and PJ, I'm about to get ready to go to a Starbucks to work on my laptop for a little bit. And I ordered an Uber. And right at the same time I clicked, come get me, I got a notification from uh, Uber that says, Jesus is on his way. And I got these chills like, wow. Today's gonna be a great day. I screenshotted it and I put it on Facebook. And I said, coincidence? I don't think so. And all of these people were like laughing at the post thinking it was like, oh, I'm just being silly. And then we had that day, literally a couple hours later. It's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. On that, I will agree with you. That's his, that's, he had an uber driver called jesus or jesus <laughs> does he really think that god was telling him it was going to be a great day by sending him an uber driver called jesus is that really what we're saying holy shit <laughs> that's cheered me right up after all the exploitation all of the fake crying the exaggeration that's cheered me right up this fucking uber driver was called jesus i'm gonna die <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope this story really inspired you to be a better person and to believe in It really inspired me to be a better, better person. I'm gonna start making videos where I pretend to cry and put so emotional in brackets and I say, I met the almighty Zod and I filmed it and I'm gonna get half a million views and be a better person for it. Thanks, Logan. So that's Logan Maybury. Now that I know who he is and the kind of content he makes, I don't want to ever see any of his videos ever again. Let's just go back to the title to wrap up. I met Jesus, literally just a regular dude called Jesus on Uber, and Satan, that's his... He didn't even explicitly say that in the video. That's just his way of saying he met people who acted differently under the influence of drugs and alcohol. That's the Satan. What a load of bullshit. Even by Christian YouTube standards, I would be interested to see if he makes more religious-based content. Just very bizarre. There's another fucking, <laughs> there's another video in my recommended now called I Saw Jesus and Was Terrified. So fucking, I'm gonna have to watch that at some point now. That was a ride. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say probably you don't feel like a better person <laughs> after watching this video. Or maybe you do just in comparison to 
some of the tactics that people use to be popular online. Do let me know your thoughts. I'm really interested to hear what you think on this. What do you think of Logan? I'm definitely not a fan. But if you think that I'm just overreacting, if you think I'm giving this guy a hard time, please let me know because I want to hear that too. That was a, that was a, yeah, that was absolutely not what I expected. Even a little bit. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Do like this video if you liked it. Subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. I have lots of videos on my channel that you can check out if you haven't seen them yet. Have a look, there'll be an end card with a, a great video for you recommended. As always, I would like to give a huge th thank you and a shout out. I keep trying to combine those into two words. A huge thank out to my giant chickens over on Patreon, Aaron Reese, Amber, Conla, Chicken Maximus Lions, God damn it, Conla, Fulcrum, Gaming Ridge, Ghost Butterfly, Izzy, Jacob Whitleaf, Lizzie Gale, Lucy Lamprell, Mr. Creosote, and Taxman. Thank you, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for watching this video. Do have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon. <laughs>